Question number one. Caden paid a total of $58.22 to mail three packages. He paid $15.25 to mail the first package and $19 to mail the second package. How much did he pay to mail the third package? So, first thing I'd like to do is go ahead and box in my question. That's how much did he pay to mail the third package? Okay, so we're worried about the third package and just the uh, just the third package. I'm going to go ahead and circle the third package, and on uh, so he mailed spent fifty eight dollars to mail all the packages, fifteen dollars to mail the uh, first package, nineteen dollars to mail the second package. And what we're trying to do is figure out the third package. So. If I know what the total of something is, the total amount, and I'm trying to figure out one of the parts, uh, what I want to go, go ahead and do is figure out what the, uh, first we figure out the, uh, the sum of the other two parts, so the sum of the second package and the first package. By doing that, I go ahead and add those together. That's 15 and 2500 or $15.25, and $19. Okay, add that up. That's 25 cents. 9 and 5 is 14. Carry my 1. So that's $34 that he paid for two of the packages. So if I want to figure out what he paid for the, the third package, I'd go ahead and subtract that from the total. So that's $58.22. If I subtract $34, and 25 cents from that, that will tell me the total for the third package. Subtraction problem. Okay, and I cannot take five away from two, so I need to regroup right here. That's going to be one, and that'll make my two a 12. Five from 12 is seven. Okay, I get another situation, two from one. I cannot do that, so I need to regroup from the ones place. That becomes a seven, that becomes 11. Two from 11, that's nine. Bring my decimal down. Four from seven is three, and five or three from five is two. So that means you spent twenty-two dollars or twenty-three dollars and ninety-eight cents to uh, to mail the third package. And remember, we want to box in our start boxing in our answers also. So the answer uh, would be answer choice C. And if you look at something, if we would have stopped right here on this step right here, we would have stopped when you added 15 and uh, 19, or 15, 25, and 19 together. We got 34, 25. Okay, if we would have stopped on that step, looked right there, that's answer choice A. Um, and also, if we would have uh, added um, all these, uh, added these numbers together, if I would have added 34, and uh, 58, I would end up with the answer choice D. So we did got to make sure we're doing the steps correctly. So take your time and make sure you, you understand what the steps are. Problem number two. The table shows the number and types of D DVDs Jared collects. Okay. Uh, and uh, he, he's got action, adventure, comedy, and western, and thriller DVDs. Okay. He put the DVDs into cases that holds nine discs. How many case cases did Jared fill completely? So, go ahead, we need to go and box in our question. And our, our table's got all the important information in there. Let's look at the question again. Okay, he put DVDs into cases that hold nine discs. How many cases did Jared fill? So the answer is going to be cases. It's important that we understand that. Okay, we need to understand that there's cases, and that's what we're trying to figure out how many cases he needs, or he, he filled uh, completely. That he filled completely. And completely is another important thing, because he, he may use more uh, cases, but we want to know how many he filled completely. So the first thing we need to do is we need to add up 
add up all these uh, all these DVDs, figure out how many or how many total DVDs he has. So that's 24, 66, 32, 8, and 2. Got to add all that up. Okay, and we can do compatible numbers here. I know 8 and 2 is 10. 6 and 4 is 10. And then 2 by itself. So that's 10, 10, and 2 would be 22. 22. And then we're going to add up 6, 2, and 2 is 10. Plus 3 would be 13. So that means he has 132 DVDs. Okay. Next thing we look at. Okay, a case will hold nine discs. A case will hold nine discs. So we're going to divide 132 by nine. So 132 divided by nine. Okay, I'm going to skip the first step. I know nine doesn't go into one. It goes into it zero times. But 9 does go in 13. It'll go into it one time. 9 times 1 is 9. Then we subtract 9 from 13 is 4. 4 is less than 9. We're good. Bring down the 2. Okay. 9 goes into 42. We're going to think, think about it for a minute. Uh, we'll say 9 times 3. Is, okay. So it'll go into it more times than 9. 9 times 4 is 36. 9 times 5 is 45. So it looks like he's going to go four times. Okay. 4 times 9 we said is 36. Subtract that. That comes with 3. That makes that 12. 6 from 12 is 6. So it's 14. Remainder 6 is our answer. And how many cases do you fill completely? Okay, it looks like he's going to fill 14 of them completely. He's going to need 15 cases though to uh, to put all these DVDs in. But it's asking how many cases do you fill completely? So that's going to be answer choice J. Let's go ahead and look at the next problem. Okay, problem number three. Logan has his own 3D printing business. He spent $267 for materials he needs to build an Imperial Star Destroyer toys. Okay. He is selling each toy for $83 each. If he makes and sells eight toys with the materials he bought, how much profit will he make? So, box in our question. I always like to box it in first. Okay, and we're trying to figure out profit on this one. We're trying to figure out the profit. And uh, profit's going to be a, a dollar amount. Okay, I've got 3D in there. Three's not important in this problem. It's just talking about his business. But he did spend $267 for materials. And uh, he's selling each toy for $83. And he's making, making eight toys. So if we remember profit, okay, when we're talking about profit, profit is the uh, difference between the amount of money you spend and the amount of money you make. So we know he spent $267. Let's go ahead and figure out what he made. In order to figure out what he made, $83 he got for each of the eight toys that he sold. So that's 83 times 8. Okay, 8 times 3 is 24. 8 times 8 is 64. 65, 66. So he made $664. But profit, we have to subtract what he spent. And he spent $267 on materials. Cannot take 7 away from 4, so I've got regroup right here. That'll be a 5, and that's 14. 7 from 14 
to 7. You cannot take 6 from 5. I got to regroup. That will be a 5, and that becomes 15. 6 from 15 is 9. And then 2 from 5 is 3. So he made $397 of profit. Okay, problem number four. Okay, the table shows the number of square feet that a carpet company laid over several months. Okay, and this table is talking about the carpet laid. You can see uh, they've got April, May, June, July. Okay. If the company laid a total of 10,443 square feet in four months, how many square feet were laid in July? So really what we're trying to figure out is how many square feet in July. So we're trying to fill in our table right here uh, with a blank amount. Uh, some other important information here is they laid a total of 10,443 square feet over the period of the full four months. I tell what uh, this shows right here what he did in April, okay, what he did in May and June, and okay, we're trying to figure out July. So in order to figure that, we're going to subtract April, May, June from the total, and that'll tell us what's, how much is in July. So we'll go and work it out over here. First thing I do is add these three up. That's 2,234, 2,784, and 2,236. Okay, 6 and 4 is 10, plus 4 would be 14. Um, 8 and 3 is 11. 12, 13, 14, 15. Carry my 1. I got 7, 2, and 1 is 10, plus 2 is 12. Carry my 1. And 2, 2, and 2, that's 6, plus 1 is 7. So, in April, May, and June, they laid, laid 7,254 square feet of carpet. So to figure out what they did in July, we'll subtract that from the total. So the total is 10,443, and we'll subtract 7,000. 254 from that. Cannot take 4 away from 3, so I've got to regroup. That'll be a 3, and that's 13. And 4 from 13 is 9. I cannot take 5 from 3, so I've got to regroup, regroup there. That's a 3. That becomes a 13. 5 from 13 is 8. 2 from 3, I knew that, that's a 1. Cannot take 7 from 0, but uh, okay, I'll regroup right here. That's a 0, and that'll be a 10. And 7 from 10 is 3. So, that is 3,189 square feet, which is answer choice D. If you look there, I didn't, I didn't look at any of my... Um, any of my answer choices while I was working on this because if I was looking at them I might have stopped right here I might have stopped right there that's 7,254 and right here he's got 7,254 as answer choice A and that's just kind of put there to trick us we know uh, we know how to do these steps so we're going to go ahead and work through all the steps and not go ahead and start looking at answer choices to try to help us um, help us answer the question. And by the way, I uh, forgot to label my answer here. That's square feet. And we're boxing in, boxing that in too. Okay, problem, next page is problem number five. Okay, Mr. Shoemaker and Miss Terry both work for the school. Miss Terry earned $5 more than Mr. Shoemaker last week. Mr. Shoemaker earned $15 last week. 
which equation can be used to find M, the amount of money both Mr. Shoemaker and Miss Terry earned last week? So we're going to box in our question. And some important information. Okay, Miss Terry earned $5 more. Uh, Mr. Shoemaker earned $15. So let's look at this for a minute. We know uh, right here Mr. Shoemaker earned $15. Miss Terry earned $5 more. Miss Terry didn't earn $5, she earned $5 more. So, if I was going to go and uh, draw a, um, maybe a, a bar graph to show this. I'll put S there, that's Mr. Shoemaker. Miss Terry earn, earned at least $15. Miss Terry, but she earned $5 more. The lines aren't lining up too well there, is it? So that's $5 more right there. So that's going to look sort of like this is 15, that's 15 in there, and that's 5. So in order to, come to, to do that, that equation is going to look um, sort of like this. That'd be 15 plus 15, because Miss Terry earned that 15, but she earned plus 5 more. So that would be the equation to solve it right there and let's look at uh, look at it here. I've got 15 plus 15 plus 5 minus 15. That's that doesn't make sense. I got 15 so I'm gonna put a false right there. Okay, 15 plus 15 plus 5 that looks really close to what I did right there. Let's put a question mark there. 15 plus 5 that's just gonna be Miss Terry's amount of money that she made right there. It's not Miss Terry uh, says, which equation can be used to find M, the amount of money both Mr. Shoemaker and Miss Terry earn? Okay, in this we got M plus 5 <coughs> equals 15 plus 15. And uh, that's not a true statement either. So G's our right answer. <coughs> Question number 4, or 6, I'm sorry. The fourth grade is planning a field trip to the zoo. The buses will cost $85 per bus, and they are budgeting $12 per student for entrance into the zoo. If they use four buses and take 100 students, how much money should they plan to spend on buses? And this is kind of a tricky one because they're, well, it's not really tricky. They're trying to trick us. It's a very simple problem to solve. Okay. What we're actually trying to do is figure out how much they spent on buses. That's all they're asking about is buses right there. So there's some information in there that's not important. Uh, how much they spent per, per student doesn't matter. It doesn't matter there, there's 100 students. Okay, all that matters is the $85 per bus and four buses. So I got $85 per bus and I got four buses. That's a multiplication problem. That's 85 times four. Five times four is 20. Okay, four times eight is 32. Plus two is 34. So that's $340. Box that in, and we write it in here on our uh, on our table using the correct place value. That's three hundred forty dollars. Okay, it's important to write that part in right there, and it's also very important to bubble in the right. Let's see if it works when I bubble it in here. Three hundred four. And zero. It's important to pl put the place values correct. If I were put uh, a three right there, and the four right there, and the zero right there, that'd only be three dollars and forty cents. Uh, place value is very important. Okay, next problem. 
problem number seven. Andrew is playing on Study Island. Okay, to pass a placement test, he needs to uh, earn 1,625 points. After he reaches this score, he gets one blue ribbon for each additional nine points he earns. The table shows the number of points he earns in the first three games. How, much, how many blue ribbons did Andrew earn in his second game? You can box that in. Okay, and all we're trying to find out is about uh, blue ribbons and in the second game. So this isn't necessarily important to us. We don't need to know inf any information about the first game or third game. Okay, uh, there are some important uh, right here. Uh, to pass the placement test, or uh, yeah, to get past the placement test, he's got to get 1,625 points. Uh, for each bl additional blue ribbon, or you see, after he reaches this score, he gets one blue ribbon for each additional nine points he earns. Okay, this is a two step problem. Okay, uh, other information that we're going to need is how many points he scored in the third game. So, we're going to take our total points here, which is 3,642. Okay, that's the total amount of points he scored in the second game. And what we'll do is subtract the, the points that he had to make to uh, do the placement test, which is 1,625. 625. Okay, and that'll get us to where we can figure out how many blue ribbons he made from that. So, subtracting, I cannot take 2 away from 5, so I gotta regroup. That's a 3. That makes that 12. 5 from 12 is 7. Next, 2 from 3, I can do that. That's 1. 6 from 6 is 0. And 1 from 3 is 2. So now, we got 2,100 or 2,017 points right there. Uh, and with that information, I can figure out how many points or how many blue ribbons he got because each nine of these, I go through here and subtract, start subtracting nine from 2017 until I got to zero. There's an easier way to do that, called division. So 2,017, and it takes nine points to get a blue ribbon. So first step, okay, I know nine doesn't go into two, I'll put a zero right there. But 9 does go into 20. It'll go into it twice because 2 times 9 is 18. I subtract, I get 2. 2 is less than 9. I'm good. I bring down the 1. 2 times 9 still 18. Get kind of smaller there. I skipped a step. I didn't write my 2 there. So 2 goes into 21. Okay, when I subtract, I get 3. Okay, I'm going to bring that back up here, my 3. Or no, bring down my 7. 37. I'll bring that up here. 37. Okay, 9 goes into 37. Let's think for a minute. 9 times, I'd say about 4 times. Because I know 4 times 9 is 36. I subtract. I get 1. There was nothing else to bring down over here. So that's my remainder. So it looks like he got 224 blue ribbons. And he's got one point left over. But uh, that would say that he got 224 blue ribbons. Problem number eight. Okay, 600 students at House Creek Elementary were divided into two groups for a field trip, for a school field trip. The first group included 279 students. The second group had more students than the first group. How many more students were included in the second group? I'm gonna box in my question. So 
Six. How many more students were included in the second group? So, I know there's a 600 total students. And um, the first group had 279 students. So if I want to figure out how many were in the second group, I just subtract 279 from the total amount of students. Okay, when I do that, so that's 600 minus 279. Okay, we'll do this uh, that little trick for subtracting across zero. If I go and subtract 1 from 600, that's 599. Then I subtract 279 from that. 9 from 9 is 0. 7 from 9 is 2. And 2 from 5 is 3. Okay, but I still have to add that 1 to my 320. So there's actually 321 students in the second group. So I could stop, if I stop there, that, and if this is a multiple choice question, I bet you 321 would be one of your answer choices. But don't stop there, because that, all you answered right there was how many students are in the second group. And what we're trying to do is find out how many more students were included in the second group. So we're trying to figure out how many more students there are. So I would take my 321, I'm going to do it over here, I have to work on this side of the board better, okay, and I take how many students are in the first group away from that, which is 279. Need to regroup there. That becomes a 1, and that's 11. 9 from 11 is 2. Can't take 7 away from 1. Or, yeah, cannot take 7 away from 1. That'll be a 2 when I regroup. And that's 11. 7 from 11 is 4. And 2 from 2 is 0. So there's 42 more students. Okay. Box that in. So there's 42 more students in the second group than the first group. Problem number nine. Okay. Misty Science class planted tomatoes to observe their growth. Her plant grew four inches every week. She wrote a rule, W e times four, to determine the height of, of the plant in any given week, where w, where w stands for the number of weeks. Okay, part A. Complete the table by writing in the heights of the tomato plants for the first four weeks. So, week one. We know it grows four inches every week. So the first week would be 4. Okay, second week, we did times 4. It's times 4. 2 times 4 is 8. Times 4. 3 times 4 is 12. Times 4. 4 times 4 is 16. So we filled in our table. We're good to go. Okay, next thing is how many weeks will it take Missy's plant to reach a height of 48 inches? Explain your solution. So that's kind of a, a little bit of a tricky question there. Okay, we could keep on adding to our table. That'd be one strategy. Let's see if we can do that. Drawer's off a little bit there, so I might maybe a little bit messy. Okay, and it looks like, you know, right here, um, if we kept on going, it'd take a little while to get to 48 because we, in four weeks, it was only 16. So let's just, we'll use a guess and check strategy. How about that? We'll do the guess and check strategy. That's a very good, viable strategy. And in four weeks is 16, and we're trying to get to 48. So eight weeks would be twice as 16. So I think it may be a little bit more than that. Let's go 10 weeks. 10 weeks is getting us really close. Look here, 10. 10 weeks times 4 equals 40. That's getting us pretty close. Okay, and one more week it would be 44, so two more weeks would be 48. So 12 times 
times 4 equals 48. So, using this strategy, we just guessed to che and checked, and we came up and take 12 weeks. Twelve weeks for it to reach 48 inches. Or there's another way of doing it. We could uh, take 48 and divide it by 4. So 4 goes into 4 one time. 4 times 1 is 4. Subtract, I get 0. Bring down the 8. 4 goes into 8 twice. 2 times 4 is 8. Track that gives us a zero. So that's another way of doing it. Uh, two ways of doing it, either by div dividing or guessing and checking or adding onto our table. Okay. And uh, that looks like that was our last question. Nine, nine, ten, I thought. No, just nine questions. There was our answer key. Okay.